A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Bah! Humbug. Christmas? A humbug, Uncle? <laughs> you don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Out upon Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer? A time for balancing your books and having every item in them presented with a round dozen of months dead against you? If I had my will, every idiot who goes about with a Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly through his heart. He should. Uncle. Nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone then. Much good may it do you. Much good it has ever done you. There are many things from which I might have derived good by which I might have profited, I dare say, Christmas among the rest. But I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time, when it has come around, to be a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time, and I say God bless it. Amen. Let me hear another sound from you, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. As for you, nephew, you're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. <laughs> now, don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I will see you in hell. But why? Why, Uncle? Why? Why did you get married, nephew? Be because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. Good afternoon. <sighs> Nay, Uncle. But you never came to see me before that happened. Why give it as a reason for not coming now? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute, but I have made the trial and homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob Cratchit. A Merry Christmas, sir. God bless you. Beg pardon, sir, but is this Scrooge and Marley's? It is. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Jacob Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. Uh, oh, uh, well, at this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons, Mr. Scrooge. But a few of us are trying to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and some means of warmth. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, you wish to be anonymous, Mr. Scrooge. I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the prisons and the workhouses. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, sir. And many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Scrooge. And a Merry Christmas to you. Bah, humbug. Here you, Bob Cratchit. Yes, sir. You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose? If it's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself mightily ill-used, I'll be bound. Yes, sir. I, I mean, no, sir. And yet you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work? It's only once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. I shall indeed, sir. Good night, Mr. Scrooge, and a Merry Christmas to you. Bah, humbug. A ghost! I know him! Marley's ghost! How now? What do you want with me? Much! Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you, then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Mercy, dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? 
Why do spirits walk the earth, and why do they come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk among his fellow men, and if that spirit goes not forth in life, is condemned to do so after death. In life, my spirit never roved beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hold, and weary journeys lie before me. Seven years dead, and traveling all the time? You travel fast? On the wings of the wind. You might have got over a quantity of ground in seven years. Oh, blind man, blind man! Not to know that no space of regret can make amends for one's life opportunities misused. Yet I was like this man. I once was like this man. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. But hear me. My time is nearly gone. I cannot tell you all I would. A very little time has permitted me. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. Hear me! I will. But don't be hard upon me. Don't be flowery, Jacob. Pray. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate, a chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. You are always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you mentioned, Jacob? I, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow night when the bell tolls one. Expect the second on the next night at the same hour. The third upon the next night, when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to see me no more, and look that for your own sake you remember what has passed between us. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. The things that you will see with me are shadows of the things that have been. They will have no consciousness of us. What business brings you here? Your welfare. Rise and walk with me, Ebenezer. Not out of the window, spirit. I am mortal and liable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand upon your heart, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Do you know this office, Ebenezer Scrooge? Know it? I was apprenticed here. And there's old Fezziwig. Bless his heart, it's Fezziwig alive again. And there's Dick Wilkins, to be sure. My old fellow apprentice, bless me, yes. He was always very attached to me, was Dick. <laughs> dear, dear, what parties we had in this office on Christmas Eve. And old Fezziwig and Mrs. Fezziwig always danced top couple, just as they're doing it there now. Those were happy times, spirit. And how very grateful we all were to old Fezziwig for those Christmas Eves. A small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. A small matter, spirit? Old Fezziwig spent but a few pounds of your mortal money. Three or four, perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves this praise? It isn't that, spirit. He had the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. Say that his power lies in words and looks, in things so slight and insignificant that it is impossible to add and count him up? What then? The happiness he gives us is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. What's the matter, Scrooge? Oh, nothing particular. Something, I think. No, no. I should just like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. That's all. My time grows short. Come with me, quick. Do you know this scene, Scrooge? Yes. Again, it is myself, with one I loved. I was a young man on that fatal day, spirit. Listen to what they say. 
It matters little to you, Ebenezer, very little. Another idol has displaced me, and if it can comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, then I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? A golden one. You fear the world too much. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. Have I not? What then? Even if I have grown so much wiser, what then? I am not changed towards you. Have I ever sought release from our engagement? In words, no, never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in another atmosphere of life, another hope as its great end. If you were free today, tomorrow, can even I believe that you would choose a dowerless girl? Or choosing her, do I not know that your repentance and regret would surely follow? I do, and I release you with a full heart for the love of the man who wants for. Spirit, remove me from this place. I told you these were shadows of the things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Remove me. I cannot bear it. Leave me. Take me back. Haunt me no longer. Look up, look up and know me better, ma'am. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Never. I've never walked forth with the younger members of my family, meaning, for I am very young, my elder brothers born in these later years. I don't think I have. I'm afraid I have not. Have you many brothers, spirit? <laughs> More than 1,800. A tremendous family to provide for. Will you come forth with me, Ebenezer Scrooge? Spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I learnt a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Come with me. Do you know this home, Ebenezer Scrooge? Why, it's my clerk's home. It's Bob Cratchit's home. Uh, yes! Bob Cratchit's house. Your clerk, Bob, who pockets on Saturdays but 15 copies of his Christian name, yet the ghost of Christmas present blesses his four-roomed house with the sprinklings of her torch. Listen. Oh, what has ever got your precious father then, and your brother Tiny Tim, and Martha Werner's late last Christmas day by half an hour? Here's Martha, mother. Hurrah! There's such a goose, Martha. Why, bless your heart alive, my dear. How late you are. We had a deal of work to finish up at last night and had to clear away this morning, Mother. Well, never mind. So long as you have come. Sit ye down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm. Lord bless ye. No, no. There's Father and Tiny Tim coming. Hide, Martha, hide. Why, where's our Martha? <laughs> Not coming. <laughs> Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? <laughs> I'm here, Father. Martha. And how did Tiny Tim behave, Bob? Good as gold. And better. You know, he told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple. And it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made the beggars walk and the blind men see. Is the punch ready, Bob? Is. And for the first toast, I give you, Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, it's Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day. I'm sure on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. 
Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, it's Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake. And the day's not for his. Long life to him, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. Come, a Merry Christmas to us all, my dear. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You are... Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be a better man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company and do it with a thankful heart. Follow me. Lead on, lead on. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me, I know. Lead on, spirit. Stop here on this corner and listen. No, I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Uh, last night, I believe. What did he do with all of his money? I haven't heard. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> Follow me, Ebenezer Scrooge, to yet another scene. Look here, old Joe. Here's a chance. What have you got to sell? What have you got to sell? Half a minute's patience, Joe, and you shall see. Every person has a right to take care of themselves. He always did. Who's the worst for a loss of a few old things? Not a dead man, I suppose. <laughs> no, I suppose not. If he had been natural in his lifetime, he'd have someone to look after him when he was struck with death, instead of lying, gasping out there, last alone. It's the truest word that was ever spoke. It's a judgment on him. I wish it were a little heavier judgment. It should have been. You may depend on it. If I could have laid my hands on anything else. Open the bundle, old Joe. Let me see the value of it. Speak out plain. What do you call this? Bed curtains? Ah, oh, bed curtains! Don't drop oil upon those blankets now. His blankets? Well, who else is it, do you think? He isn't likely to take hold without them, dare I say. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Spirit, let me see some tenderness connected with a death, or this dark chamber spirit will be forever present to me. Follow me. Bob Cratchit's home again. But why are they all so quiet? What's that the boy is reading? And he took a little child and set him in midst of them. What's the matter, Mother? Why have you stopped your needlework? <laughs> the color hurts my eyes. There. They're better now again. It makes them weak to work by candlelight, and I wouldn't show weak eyes to your father when he comes home for the world. It must be near his time. Past it, rather, but I think he's walked a little slower than he used, since Tiny Tim is gone, mother. I've known him walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed. So have I, often. But Tiny Tim was very light to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble. Ah, uh, there's your father at the door. Hello, Mother. Hello, Peter. You are late, dear. You went to the grave today, then, Robert? Yes, my dear. I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place it is. But you'll see it often. I promised Tiny Tim that I would walk there on a Sunday. My little, little child. 
my little child. Spectre, something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. Before you leave me, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or the shadows of things that may be only? Man's courses will foreshadow certain ends, to which, if persevered, they must lead. But, if the courses be departed from, the ends will change. Say that it is thus with what you show me. Spirit, hear me. I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been, but for this intercourse. Why show me these things, if I have passed all hope? Assure me that I yet may change these shadows you have shown me by an altered life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. It's morning. It's a clear, bright day, and I am in my own room. Hello. Hello there. What's today? Eh? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. Hello there, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the Poulters in the next street but one at the corner? I sure hope I would. An intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey. The big one? What? The one as big as me? What a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now. It is. Go and buy it. Yes, sir. Go and buy it and tell him to bring it in here that I may give the man directions where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. But come back with him in less than five minutes, and I'll give you half a crown. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's. He shan't know who sends it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Joe Miller never made such a joke as sending it to Bob's will be. He's late. The day after Christmas, and Bob Cratchit's late for work. Ah, there he comes. Hello? What do you mean by coming here at this time of day, Bob Cratchit? I'm very sorry, sir. I'm behind my time. You are? Yes, I think you are. Step this way, if you please, sir. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather a merry Christmas yesterday, sir. Now I'll tell you what, my friend. I am not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, I am about to raise your salary. A <sighs> merry Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. And we shall discuss your affairs this very afternoon over a bowl of Christmas bishop. Bob, make up the fires and buy a second coal scuttle before you dot another eye. Merry Christmas, Bob Cratchit. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> 